We'll start. We'll start slow. Can't hold back. Can't hold back. <laughs> Still got a headache from last last night. So. <clears throat> So again, my name is John Carisco. I'm also called Day Trader Rockstar. I do a radio show every single day. I get on the mic around 8 o'clock and I talk to markets and I trade live till about 4 o'clock. And when, before this, I was explaining when I started. I started back in 96. I quit my job and I gave it a shot and it lasted about a year. Then I got my job back. <laughs> And then I tried it again, and you know, slowly over time, you know, I knew that this was a passion. This is what I really wanted to do, so I, I did it. You know, I got lucky. I got I, I caught the tech rally. I you know made a lot of money in that. I gave a lot of that back in the tech bubble in 9/11, and learned that I you know and went through the 2008 crash and the 2012 you know pullbacks and stuff. But over time, disciplined and started realizing why my success level was you know where it was and what made it better and realized all of a sudden almost like one day and I think it was after my son was born that I realized I'm always I don't even know how to explain it and try to get into everyone's mind because everyone has a different mindset and different personality type and that made that makes you a different trader and it's very hard to um, you know what's in my mind and my passion for this I don't know if you you have the same passion. Anyway, let's start, start off here. So what I was going to do today, just talk about, after all those years, a technique that I trade, and I call the high probability setups. I'm fading out? All right. Yeah, I could talk into the thing. That's what I do. Oh, they're doing, yeah, we, we're broadcasting this live, by the way. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so so over, 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 the, uh, over the years, I realized that c certain things were working. I started, I started um, reading into some his historical indicators. I started learning indicators. Um, you know, everyone knows their basic indicators, mo moving averages and RSI and MACD and, and stochastics. And there's, there's tons of them out there. Let me just start off here. There's my show. Disclaimer. I guess I should go over a disclaimer. You can lose your money. Everyone knows the disclaimer. I think I wrote a little thing that and said trading is hard because we think too much. You know, to have any chance in uh, this business, you must consistently apply the, a follow set of rules, which will eliminate the opportunity to think too much. You know, and that's just something that I would put as a disclaimer because you're going to see why. So over the years, you know, I took everything I, I learned and I kind of started writing it down and building a, a, uh, a method around it. I needed something to make me disciplined. You know, I needed to so know what worked for me and I needed to define that in a methodology. I started studying uh, George Lane. He was the father of stochastics. And if you ever have a chance, it's not a lot of information on, on the internet, but I, I was very lucky that someone gave me his, you know, some of his personal um, notes and stuff that he took classes with him. So I studied it and I, I learned it and I, I, I pulled out some old interviews and stuff and I started really working with stochastics and the concept behind what the stochastics mean. And it, the stochastics measure the momentum behind, um, and you can take pictures and momentum behind your, your, uh, your stock. It's measuring momentum, and I'm going to go into what a stochastic is in a, sec a second. But I also use other things. I, you know, I really truly believe that the market is full of algorithms and they're searching for trend lines, and trend lines are basically points, two points, and you can draw a line, and that line extends, and that's your trend line. And if the price comes back up to it, that's an area you have to watch. So if you know these areas, they all start to add up, and that's something that you see happen over and over again. So it's it's a very it's a high probability chance that you have a, a good trend line. Your your price is going to react to that, or it's important to watch moving averages. Everyone self fulfilling prophecy. Everyone watches them, and you see how they how well they work. Uh, patterns. I've, I consider myself a pattern. You know, I watch a lot of patterns. 
wedge patterns, channels, and what I call one, two, three channels, which are the basic how to develop a channel and flags and pennants and how to read those and understand what a flag is and stuff like that. And we're gonna go into all this in a bit. Support and resistance, the standard support and resistance and wild card. I talk reversal candles and everything could be seen sometimes on a candle if you, if, you know, and again, each one of these topics could be a course in its own. So I'm not gonna put too much time into those, but those are the things that really consist, uh, what really, um, is in the method. We're looking for a combination of the stochastics being overbought and oversold, lining up with three of the indicators. So three out of the five indicators have to be lining up. That means the price on the stochastics has to be in a oversold level. The price needs to be on a confirmed trend line or moving that, or any of the other three, as long as there's three. That, for me, uh, is classified as a high probability setup. That's HPS. So when you hear me talk about HPS, it's because a lot of indicators are all lining up. But that's not the real beauty of stochastics, but that's how I use them a lot. All right. Most consistent money-making trades that I trade, you know, and again, in the beginning when I was a trader, sorry, I had to get on the mic here. When I was a trader in the beginning, I didn't really know what I was doing. You know, I'd be in the market, the market's running, someone would say, get into something, I'd get in it. I, you know, I was following the crowd, I was fo following the herd. I was being um, reactive, I wasn't being pro proactive or, or, or doing anything that was knowledgeable or figuring anything out on my own. I, you know, I was always, I didn't know what I was doing, I was, just, I was in the market, all right? So I started, you know, over years and over years, I've realized that certain stocks work great for me, divergences, and that's what I'm gonna be talking about tonight today. Um, these are other, other trades I do, but basically I'm a one setup trader, a one setup trader. And what that means is I wait for that setup because I know that setup is the best setup in the market. I know from science, I know from 20, you know, 21 years of trading, I, I would take that setup and go against anybody with their setup. And I'm not saying I'm going to do that. I even want to do that. <laughs> But that's how comfortable I am. I, I can't come to these shows anymore and go, oh, I'm going to check out what he got. Because I know what I do makes me money. Because I have to establish a certain criteria that locks me into this. It locks me into taking this trade. If I get bored, you say, Jesus, that's, that's a pretty boring life, just waiting for one setup. Johnny, how many setups do you get a, a day with this? <laughs> you know, we're going to go into that. So the other, there's a couple other setups I do take. But I would only teach for a new trader coming into the, into the world of trading or someone who's unsuccessful or someone who wanted to learn how to trade, you know, I would love to be a Mr. Miyagi and say, you know, hey, you know, this is what you need to do, you know? Here's your, here's, you gotta practice this one technique over and over, you have to be great at it. And then your mental and your discipline and your patience, you have to wait for it. Because anything else, you're gonna be gambling. All right, so let's go into this one setup. All right, I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna jump past goals right now. That's a little bit more of a mental thing, and I don't not gonna have that much time to get through everything. So I'm gonna jump through it. But goals. I don't really like to keep goals. Cause I think goals are kind of set set you up for failure. If you're like, oh, I need to make five hundred dollars today, and it's three three thirty, and you you don't even have two hundred, so you start over trading or pushing a trade because you're trying to hit that goal. The market is not always gonna be there for you to trade. It's not gonna give you what you want. You have to take what it gives you and be disciplined enough to know to do that and be patient enough to wait for the next setup. So divergences, which I'm gonna teach you today, this is what a divergence is. All right, and we're gonna use, you could, uh, you could apply a divergence to anything. You could apply it to a stock, you could apply it to an, uh, you know, anything that you're trading, you could apply a divergence to using stochastics. So we're gonna be applying it mostly to what we call the ES mini chart or the S&P mini, or regular stocks, just stocks and charts. And it's when, when the price of an asset is moving, in this case, remember, not to confuse you also, I wanna show you both sides. There's a buy side and there's a sell side, short and a long. You know, I don't wanna be, you know, just talking about bullish indicators, but just remember, anything I talk about, if I talk about a buy side, could be reversed, and it works just as well for the sell side or the short side. But with an asset indicator, 
or any related asset move in the opposite direction. The technical, all right, so let's go into it. I'm just gonna tell you out of my own words what the divergence is. Um, <clears throat> I wonder if that could work, work with it. Can I, uh, yeah, I know what to do here. Let me, uh, the mic. All right, so your price. He's like texting me, telling me that he's not talking to the mic. He's talking radio all day, he, he forgets about mic. So your, your price is coming down. Up here, you can see, see right here? Say this is your price, and your price is coming down and making a low. And it's just basically in a trend. It's coming down, it bounces, and it comes down again. It makes a lower low, and balances, and makes a lower low. As that is happening, your stochastics underneath, you have an indicator, it's a little squiggly line, you can put it on your charts. Stochastics should be mimicking that chart. Usually momentum is down, the stock is moving down. Momentum is pushing back up, the stock is moving back up. So it's very basic to be able to follow stochastics. A lot of people look at stochastics and they think, oh, that's overbought and oversold. George Lane, when he developed that, he didn't develop it as an overbought and oversold. He, he developed it as a divergence indicator, meaning that it's measuring the momentum underneath the stock price. So a divergence basically is that price is making that low, all right? The stochastics are making that low. The price bounces, and the price comes back and takes out the previous low. But what happens to the stochastics? The price, stochastics cannot come down and take out the previous low. You get a lower low on the price, but a higher low on the stochastics. So that's your divergence. That's your divergence right there. That's what we're looking for. Same thing on the bear side or bull side. So the bear side, your price is making a higher high. See that higher high? And stochastics are making a lower low. Now, let's click, click that. A couple other examples, all right? These are just examples. There's a better example with a price. I'm gonna give you some good examples. So here's your price. It bounces a little, it makes a lower low. Here's your stochastic, it's underneath this 20 line. It bounces back up. The, the, the low takes place, but the stochastics cannot make a lower low. That is your divergence. That setup right there, once you learn it, the proper way of learning, identifying and placing a stop, is, is the best, highest probability setup out there. It, that is your, um, you know, that's your, that's your gamble, we'll call it whatever you will. That is your, your, your hand that you need to bet on. That's your pitch that you're taking. How many, you know, and this can be applied. So when George Lane said, all right, what does that mean? What are, what are we seeing when we see that rotation? Well, George Lane did a, get a good quote on this. He said, picture you have a rocket, and that rocket is going up. That rocket has an engine in it. And that engine is taking off, and that's the momentum behind the price. The price, you know, it's going up, and the candles are going up, and everything's going up. And all of a sudden, that rocket, they cut the engine off. What happens to that rocket? It goes down, but not really. Not really. It goes up a little bit further because of momentum. So if I just cut, to, if I, I'm, sh you know, if it's going up a thousand miles an hour, and you cut it, it's going to go. 700 miles enough, 600, 500, 400, 300, 200 miles, and then that's gonna turn over and come down. That's what momentum does to the stock price. You could measure that momentum turning over and know that the stock price is gonna go a little higher. So that's what the divergence was meant to be used for. It means when the stock is turning down, now this is my, and again, I'm, I'm fitting a lot in. Normally I'm doing this every day, so remember, I'm talking every day on the market and I'm explaining this on day trading radio. So if you, if you don't get enough, you just have to tune in and um, you know, listen to the show and enjoy the show and you'll learn more about this. This is a criteria you need to, to follow. Again, yes? Are you using the fast or the slow version? And yes. All right, I wanna go into those. That's a good question. Just to, just to answer your question, I'm using the 9.3, the 9.3 fast. All right, when George Lane de developed the stochastics, started off with the fast stochastics, then they, made the f then they made the slow stochastics, which was just an added moving average to smooth it out. And then they added a full stochastic, which is another parameter, and I don't really even pay attention to that. Sometimes you'll see me use it, but I, you know, I just, I don't really use it. Um, 9.3 fast and 14.3. I use dual, dual stochastics. The 9-3, well, I want to explain what stochastics are a little bit better. I don't know if anybody 
is familiar with them. If you're not familiar with them, get familiar with them. You know, this is, it's, it's really the best thing. So your price is making your low. The stochastics make a low. The price moves up. The price comes back down, takes out the lows. The stochastics hold above the lows. Now, for me, and my chart, the way I set it up, it says here, uh, stochastic above. I use the 2080 line. The 20 line is basically when you see stochastic, when they give you that basic default criteria, it gives you 20 and 80 usually. So I use the 20 line as my line to watch. It has to go, the first stage, I call the first stage of stochastic, stage one is that first low. At that first low, the stochastics have to be under 20. Then the price is gonna bounce up a little. And then it's gonna come back down quickly. And it's gonna take out the previous low. So this is basically what we're talking about. And then, but when we come back down and take out the previous low in the price, I want the stochastics to stay above 20. Now there's a key here because this gets a little confusing for some traders. Wow, that's even better. Um, a lot of people want these stochastics, they want these divergences so bad, they'll be saying, all right, I'm measuring it. John, this one is under there, and this one, I can't really tell, but I think it is a divergence. The steeper the, the, steeper the divergence, meaning from eight, from stage one to stage two, that higher low, that, steep, that, that steeper higher low there, when it makes that higher low, if you put a trend between those, that's how we determine like the steepness of this. So it's a flat and it comes down here and it's just a little bit above it. There's not much of a line, it's almost flat. But if it turns back up, way up here when the price makes a low, that's a much steeper divergence. So that's what we really want. The steeper the divergence, the better the divergence, the better the trade. Optional at that time, this is a one minute time frame I'm using, using, using it on. But you can apply this to a five minute time frame or a 60 minute time frame. Our daily charts and swing traders, I will only take a, a swing trade and say, all right, I'm gonna get into quality name, a good name, but I wanna wait for my divergence to set up. It might not happen for months. So I might not trade a certain stock, but I'm looking at thousands of stocks and I'm usually within those thousands of stocks, every, every week there's usually a divergence in some sector that I'm looking at and I'll, 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 I'll trade that stock if I get out. So I have ways of identifying these. All right, so again, I'm, just, I'm going to start showing these a little bit better. Here you, you see over here the price is going down. Let me see if I could push it over here. You can see stage one and stage two. Very simple. When you see a stage one and stage two like that, 85, 90% of the time, no news, the market's going to move in the direction of the divergence. All right, so that is your first key to taking your first trade. That is very important. Over on the other side here, you have a very high stochastic line. The price came down and put in the double bottom, meaning it didn't take out the lows. <clears throat> that actually, and not to confuse it, is just as good as a regular divergence. The important part is the relationship of the momentum stochastics on the, you know, making that high or low, if the price holds the low. Oop, I just touched that, but I could go back, good. So that's, that's also a viable divergence, a double bottom with a stochastic high or low. In both of those situations, you could see the stock has moved up there. Now, I would, you know, I, I don't have internet in here. I would love to, uh, unless I do. No, I was just saying, you know, I, was, I wish I had two screens and so we could have a live thing, because a lot of times people, you, you could say that um, we, you know, you can put any chart you want there. But I, I, if we had any chart, and when we go back outside, feel free to come over to the booth, and I have a live trading th screen up there. We identified the divergence, and you can see them live. It's much better to see them live and being saying, instead of getting the picture and showing to you, it's like, all right, I could look for divergence and bring it up and say that works. But divergences are, are really good. But I'm trying to just show you what they look like so you understand how to identify them. Yeah. Good question. Good question. Stochastics uh, typically come with two lines, a percentage K line and a percentage D line. All right? And to talk a little bit more about stochastics, they're looking back, you know, like, so when you, when you talk stochastics, you have, in this case, what do you have here? A 9-3. So the nine, 9 represents the percentage K, and that re represents how many bars you're looking back. So you're looking back nine bars. 
The three represents your place in a three period moving average on that, that signal or that K line. And that's, get, that's being plotted on a D line, percentage D line. I only use the percentage D line. I take the smoother of the two lines. I don't do any stochastic crossover, so I only use one line. The percentage, the 9-3, fast stochastic, I make the K, percentage K transparent. I only trade off the D line. I don't even have, I don't want to have the two lines on there. I think a couple of charts you might see and I'll show you what they look like. No, 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 no. There's no, there's only one line. I get rid of the percentage K line. You have to get rid of the two lines. You don't want to be any, you're looking for a divergence. There's no crossover trades here at all. So the only thing you're worried about is, I want to get, get down here. I want this right here. Between here and here, this price and this price, I want this to move higher. It would be much higher when this is lower than there. When this was low, this was low. It bounced up and came back, made a lower low, but this could not go down. That is our divergence. So you're waiting for the second Yes. Two stages. The second low. You have to have a second low for a divergence. Um, if you have a channel, this is a great technique. So lots of times a, a, a chart, it could be anything. In this case, it's the S&P. I love using divergences, trading the E-mini futures. Love it. I think that's where you're going to make your, your most money if you have the discipline and patience to wait for those setups. You can have a trend line that's coming down. This is a perfect example of a very tight trend line. And you're like, all right, when am I going to get in? When am I going to get in? You put a top trend line, you put a uh, top channel line and a bottom channel line. That, that trend right now, I wish I did it on my chart. I didn't put a tr trend line in. But you could see at the end of it, the price made a low. And look at the stochastics right there, how they made a, uh, a higher low here. And that was your key that your channel is going to break. So I have a rule. In a defined channel, a very defined channel like this, a stochastic will break out that channel. That will break out of that channel 90% of the time. 90% 90 of the time, a divergence in a, a confirmed channel, your target will take you out of the channel. So that gives you two things. It gives you your entry, but it also gives you the other important part of the, um, the formula is when you're going to take these things off. How are you going to determine what your profit is on a trade like that? That is the weak link. I could show you a great setup, but most people still will lose money doing it because they won't have a good execution or they, won't, they will expect too much from the market and not, under, not be able to read the market correctly. The market's trending down and you see a buy side divergence. You're not looking for a big move. You're looking for a move a little bit bigger than the average move but you're probably looking for that same trend to continue. So you have to know that never make a goal of saying, I want to make $100, I want to get six ticks on this. If you get your divergence in the channel, you want to watch for a break out of the channel. It's going to break out of the channel. Then you need to be putting that, that, that stop underneath, locking those profits. And hopefully, you know, and remember what I said, it's hopefully, because we can't guarantee anything, your momentum is going to continue to drive that up. But the, the money-making trade is right there. When you identify a divergence, you're going to get a bigger than average move outside the channel 90% of the time. All right, these are other examples. You know, these are th just things on JP Morgan and regular stocks. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I want to wait for a candle. If we go all the way back to the methodology, remember, I think a great technique, the weakest link is the trader himself. I think we have a great, a, a great way of trading and identifying great setups, but our weakness is thinking too, too you know, letting it get by us, not pulling the trigger, feeling nervous, whatever it is. So I, I now, have added other things to the divergence to force my trade. So I'll take a divergence, but I want to have a reversal candle. And if I see a candle, a green candle, where that divergence has happened, I'll take that and I'll push that button. I'm in that uh, that trade. 
Yeah, on that first green one. Because that first green one, I'm only looking, I'm gonna go over this too, it's all coming. But there's only five candles I'm looking for with a divergence. So it has to be an engulfing pattern, a hammer, a piercing pattern, uh, um, an outside day, or an outside period candle. It has to be something that takes out the lows and ends on the upper, upper part of the candle. And I'll show you those candles in a second. If that happens with a divergence, you can add another 5% of probability. That brings it up to like a 90% chance of that working, especially with that candle. So it's up to you. If you're gonna take a divergence, you can, or you can wait for a divergence with a reversal candle. And, and then the, the, big, the big part of this is where you're gonna place your stop. The stop is already defined for you. The, when you trade a divergence and this thing gives you that signal, it's very easy to know if it didn't work. It takes out the low. So it is a very tight stop usually when you're able to, right when you get a, a divergence and you place your order, your stop goes in one tick underneath the divergence low. What's the difference between those two? The stochastics? George Lane started with 9.3. He moved to 14.3. In some of his, his work, he used 14 and 3. That's just taking 14 periods instead of 9 periods. It's a little bit more, um, it's still fast, what I consider a fast, like a fast uh, signal. Yeah, well you could, you could make it, you could, you could adjust that number to anything you want. But the 9.3 the is the one I use, mostly. I use the 14.3. I find that, and again, you have a divergence sometimes on a 9-3, sometimes on a 14-3. If you have them on, the divergence on both of them, that's the one, again, that kind of ties you even more, your, your discipline becomes, yeah, yeah, you know. That's why I keep both, diver, I keep 14 and 9-3 up there because I realize, hey, I use the 9-3 or I could use the 14-3, but if they both show up on both of them, that's a, that's a go-to trade. Now, that's 60 or something like that? 60, 10. Yeah, 60-10. My second, like I said, I'm a divergence trader. I love trading the uh, divergences. If I were to say, all right, John, what's your second favorite trade to take? I've recognized how to determine if a flag is going to break out and when a flag is going to break out using three divergence indicators. And I, I could show it, to, you know, I wasn't gonna go into it, but I always have it on my chart. So that's a longer term trend. Even though I'm using the one minute time frame, the 60 periods, I'm looking back 60 periods, it's really giving me a bigger picture of looking at where the, where, the, where the market is or what I'm looking at without looking at a different time frame. So if this is embedded, what we call embedded or underneath 20 or embedded above 80, I could tell that there's a big trend, in fact, or what, where, what direction that trend is in. So I use that with my flags. I don't use it with this technique at all. So I use that because I'm always, I'm a, I'm a trader and I'm looking for, if I do see a flag, um, if I do see a flag, I'm, I'm looking for an, an opportunity. It's almost, maybe I have a, a, I'll show it to you, but it's a, for a flag setup. It has nothing to do with the divergences. For what one? Same thing. Daily, daily time frame though. And you're not, I would, well then three, four months, you know, you're gonna go out to a, maybe a weekly chart. So I would look a weekly or a monthly chart. The longer the time frame, the, the stochastics work hit. This was a JP, well, JP Morgan, say you're looking at stocks and you want a divergence. This is a daily chart. So, you have a move in a one minute time frame. You can rotate up from overbought to oversold in one minute and on a one minute chart in two or three minutes. That same signal on a daily chart would be two or three, four days. So if you're looking for a long, long term, term, long -term trade, I would go to that time frame, apply the technique, and then take that trade. So here's JP Morgan, just to show you the same techniques that high, that lower low, that kind of reversal candle. In this case, it was, you know, I let the reversal candles let people decide because it's just an added indicator that helps you dis be more disciplined and more exact in your trade. Um, just in a few years, last, last few years on the site, 
you know, when we talk about this, lots of times I'm on the chat room, um, um, answering someone's question somewhere, or someone's telling me to bring up a thing, and I, I look back and I just saw, oh, I, I missed a divergence, and I, I'm cursing on the mic. No, I'm not cursing, but I'm, I'm not too happy. And I said, damn, that was like a perfect divergence. Why didn't you guys tell me that? You know, there's people in the chat room and stuff. Well, I'm doing news and stuff. So I've been working on bots now, um, and an algorithm to identify these divergences to kind of send that signal out. So I, this is, um, this is something new I've been working with with NinjaTrade that identifies the divergence. I wanted to show you um, just how that worked and stuff, but that's basically, that's a NinjaTrader add-on. You see that on the show a lot. So now I've, I trust in this so much that I don't want to miss any divergence. Missing a divergence for me, it's just, I just lost money. You know, I, I mean, we have a saying, you know, when we pick up $50 bills every day, if we have a good divergence, there's all different type of traders here, but the goal is, is to make money, and it doesn't matter how much money you make as long as that money, you're making money. Because once you make money, if you make small money, you can make big money. If you just apply the same technique with a bigger amount, but you want to be consistent. So we try to teach by what we call a $50 trade. You know, you get uh, two contracts, you get a divergence, and you get a point, or make, you know, you make $100, $100 a trade, just very simple. I was, oh, that's not that much. I said, well, would you be walking down the street and see a $50 bill? Would you pick it up? Absolutely, i pick it up. I said, well, it's, this is the same thing. If you get a divergence and you miss it, you just threw away $50 or $100, I think. So that's why I wanted, so now I, I get alerts now, so I don't miss any of my divergences. Sell side divergence, same thing. Same, it's just the opposite. Stochastics have to be over the 80 line on the first level, and again, it's not cut off on the bottom, I just I only had enough room, so I just wanted to show you. The price makes a high there, stage one on the bottom there. The price makes a high, stochastics are at a high. Price moves back down a little, pushes back up, makes a new high. Stochastics failed to get back above that 80 line. That's your divergence. Right when you see that, you get that next candle, it's actually a big candle, you can take that trade to the downside. Place your stop one tick above the previous uh, or that candle's high. Now the the important thing again is where do you take your profit? You know, that's probably one of the harder things to determine because every situation should be different. You don't know how what the market is doing at the time. Um, you know, these on average, I mean, this is actually a, in a stock. Everything's different. On when I trade the ES, I think you get the most bang for the buck on the ES and trading ES divergences. You, you know, if you had two contracts and you're getting a point, you know, that's, what, that's a good, you do that three or four times a day, you're making, you know, a few hundred dollars just on that simple technique. And you're not, you know, you get a good margin, so you're paying $500 margin per contract with a, a good broker. You could actually make a, a high percentage uh, gain on your money trading divergences. Um, see what I say here? The higher high should be capped with a reversal candle. Divergence signals are best oh, when they're lined up with the upper channel lines or trend lines. So everything goes back to the original multiple indicator slide. I remember in the, way in the beginning, I could go back to it, but we talked about stochastics being the number one. Then we have trend lines, moving averages, recognizable patterns, reversal candles. A divergence, when it sets up, is great in itself, but if it sets up inside of, with anything else working around it, it just makes it even better. It just makes it even better. There's a, there's a, oh, there's a, there's a good example of a sell side divergence. Well, it's a better example because it was the one on the bottom there. Couple questions. Sure. Uh, if you have a third divergent point, would you stop out and then re-enter? Yeah. There is a, um, you mean a higher high and a lower high. There's, a, there's a, a thing about that, it's called a running divergence. It's called a running divergence. And usually, and, and George Lane, again, the guy who invented this, and I, I'm not gonna quote the exact term he called, I think he called it three rips to a top, or three pops to a top, and three dips to a bottom. So he, he understood lots of times there would be a situation where you're getting one, two, and three tops, and a lower low, and a lower low, and a lower low. So you have this, you know, you have this situation now where your, your rule is to take your stop 
out of that. So you got you to maintain that and you got to take that stop out. You see that, you see that divergence set up again, you need to get, get back in. Yes. And the question was if you actually use volume in your trading? Um, not too much. Not too much. I, I do, though, for example, if the, if the trend is down or the trend is up, if I see shrinking volume, that may alert me that there's a change in, there's a change in direction that's coming. Or if you see a volume spike up or down, mm. that could be just yeah. well, taking out, taking out stops. He has a, he has a point because we do pay attention to the volume on news. So if I see a spike in volume and I realize this, and the news hasn't hit yet, but I know there's something odd on this, lots of times the divergence will happen off of those spikes because you got a fast reaction in the price, either up or down. The momentum takes a long time to catch up to that and doesn't move, and you'll see the momentum drop real fast. And the price will be taking out the highs. That's a great divergence to take. Hey, and it happens with volume. So I do pay attention to the one minute ES volume. But if I look at a daily chart, what I meant on here, I'm not looking with any divergence other than reversal candles. Um, but I want to be, I want to apply this technique to liquid stocks, a liquid, you know, something that, um, that has a, a decent amount of volume, you know, where it, I'm not really too worried about, but individual, when we're talking about a one minute time frame and scalping the markets on the ES, yeah, I want to pay attention to the volume. All right, hold on. Oop. Um, that's a, another sell divergence on a one minute time frame. You see the bottom stochastic, that was the, that was the nine three on the bottom here. You see that little yellow line pointing down right there. Oop. I got to watch these. That was a nice divergence. Let's push to the next one. All right. So there's a lot to, to, you know, again, this is something I'm willing to, you know, I actually have it on the site. If you go to the site, you can actually um, see this. Um, it's a position sizing chart. It kind of puts you in a position where how many contracts should I take as a, in a divergence? Well, I can't answer that for you. I don't know. How, you know, how much money or how much, you know, what you're, what you're trading and what your size is, and you might not even know that. So this is a good way of actually going by um, how much you should be trading. Now, I usually, I mean, the, the standard is 2%. I usually trade a little bit more on a risk of a 3% risk per trade, but with divergences, it's, it's set, it's already set. But I just, you know, this is part of the presentation, um, and I, again, this is on the website, but this kind of talks about different account levels and how many contracts you would trade. And it's very easy, you know, very easy to figure out of how much money you have, how much margin. You put in the, uh, you put in everything and it'll tell you how many, how many contracts you should trade to stay under a certain percentage of risk for your, so I, I always recommend a lot of people, you know, if you get a good margin on a, on a uh, ES broker and maybe paying $500 per contract, that's great. So that enables you to actually get, and that's a good example. I mean, you could actually trade the, a high probability divergent style with $5,000 very easily, multiple contracts, you know. But I'm not telling you how, how much money to start with. I'm not telling you or anything like that. Um, more divergences, you know, divergences, divergences. There's channels in these things. When channels and divergences play out together with reversal candles, see that divergence right there with the circle around it? That had a, that big green candle. It just took off. A lot of time, we'll, let me go back to that. If you look through that, usually you won't find any divergences if they're not a divergence. So when you see a divergence, it's, it's like it is right there. It is telling you, hey, this is a divergence. We have a higher low when the price made a lower low. The price is 90% is going to make a big drastic move in the direction of the divergence qu quickly after that. Is it closing low only or low, actually low of the box? Meaning if it's a hammer on the second one. Yeah. And the hammer actually closed higher than the prior low. Yes. Low, yes. Low. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, Some so, of us won't wait for that candle to even close, though. I'll step in and I'll anticipate what I think it's going to do. 
Yeah, a lot of people will start anticipating, like Rob anticipates, he'll see a divergence because we've done it so much that you could actually know a divergence is setting up just by the channel, the way the stock is reacting, the little bounce, and we know where the place of the stochastic is at the time and where the price is, that all we need is a fast move down in price. There's no way that the, the momentum is showing on the stochastic is high or it's trending higher. All I need to do is get a lower low and watch the stochastic stay there. I know that that's, this was a divergence. So at, at a point when you really get really good at this, you'll be able to see these trades before they even happen. You don't have to react to them. You can predict when they're gonna happen. You're gonna see a downtrend. You're gonna say, all right, here's a low. And you'll, you'll just see it. And it's just something that comes natural. It's just, it's, whenever you become good at something, you try to explain it to someone who's never done it before, you have to get that feel for it. You know, it's just, I, I, I couldn't do certain things that people could do. And they could do play piano and stuff. And I said, I wouldn't even know what to do. And they don't even, or they hear something or see something, and just, they have that, they're tuned into it. And being in the market so much, you start, you start to get tuned into things. Um, so again, I w you could use the stochastics. Here's a great example of stochastics on your longer term charts. This is the daily chart. Again, the same thing. Right where these circles are, the price made the lower low, the stochastic made a higher low. We moved up. Same thing here, there was a stochastic that came down, we made the higher low, moved up, and hit same thing here, it moved up. And these are daily. Profit-wise, again, that's, that's a, an area that's gonna be the weak area of the whole thing. Because some people are gonna look for certain things, some people are gonna be more greedy, some people are gonna be more fearful. 60-minute divergence, I like using the 60-minute divergence. One of the, you know, the holy grail of trading, we were talking about that. I don't believe there's a holy grail of trading, but we've narrowed it down to a point where I believe that this the divergence inside of a wedge pattern. If any guys know what a wedge, wedge pattern is? It's where the price is just, instead of a channel, we're kind of coming into a wedge. And we trade wedges a lot. Wedges and divergences are, you know, something that you shouldn't, you shouldn't miss. Again, those are the ones, the ones you want to step up. First, you have two good channel, you have two good techniques. Some people, I like trading wedge patterns. If I have a divergence in the wedge pattern, I, like I said, I want to step up on that. Now, this is kind of a channel. This was a wedge also. I remember taking this trade. And they come along. They come along. So you just have to watch for them. But you can see that divergence at the end there and the price going lower, and how this, there's some micro channels in there, and how, the cha how that price area jumped above that downward channel. It was like a channel within a channel um, right here, right where it, it jumped out of there. So it was a tight channel, we had the divergence, and then here's the divergence and the breakout of the a wedge. There's also a wedge in the, in the stochastics. Lots of times the stochastics will mirror the price level, so if you get a a, you know, a wedge in the stochastics with a divergence, it's, it's a pretty great setup. Uh, but I prefer the one minute, the one minute time frame. Yeah, it just gives you more opportunities. Shoot, uh, um, well, no, I mean, you don't have to take everyone. The, so, uh, on average, you know, it's hard to, like, uh, one of the questions is like, well, not one, well, no. the, the question I get a lot is how many trades do you take a day, all right? Like I said, for me doing the show, I miss a lot of them, and I get upset at missing them. So now I, I've developed a system where, you know, I get alerted to them, and I don't want to miss them. I even have a, a, a bot that takes them for me. On average, from my experience, I usually typically run into maybe on a, on a slow day, maybe two divergences. May on a good day, maybe up to seven divergences. I would like to be taking three of those. You know, I think they're all pretty equal because my criteria for divergence is a little stricter than his criteria to divergence. So I'm, I'm teaching, so I want to make sure people are getting into the right. So I'm, I'm requiring a steep, steep stochastic divergence. You know, I want, I, want a, I want the best setup person. I want a reversal candle. Some people might not take a reversal candle. He might jump and say, this looks like the divergence, and get in it, and, and you'll know, get a better, yes? So these are great divergences. If they're in, they're entry, what is your like, target? Where do you want to get out? 
I, just, I am, the stop automatically comes in. Let me see if I actually might be coming up here. Daily divergences, five minute divergences on the SPY, 31%. All right, anyway, I'll, we'll stop there for a second. Before I was mentioning, the great thing about divergence trading is it's a, it's a technique or a signal that you cannot miss. It's a very scientific signal, and it has a lot of science and a lot of math behind it. It has momentum behind it. The, the, what's happening behind the scenes and divergences, and when George Lane's developed this, he's taking the momentum of all those candles, and he's measuring where it closes on each candle in relationship to the previous candle, and it's being marked on a, a scale from zero to 100. If it's zero, zero percent, or 100 percent of the, the candle, so as this is going on, sorry, <clears throat> what was I, I'm getting off track here. <laughs> sorry, what was what was your? You, oh, you were talking about the stops, no, no, the, like, targets. the targets. The yeah, yeah. All right, let's get back to that. The um, the stop is automatically set when you have a divergence. It's, it's such a good, easy thing to spot because you have two stages. You have the first stage, which is the low, you have the balance, and you have the lower low. The second stage, the higher low in the stochastics, that's your divergence. That second stage, that candle, that reversal candle, put the stop, one tick, what? All right, the profits. There's two ways I take my profits. I'm working off a one minute time frame. So I'll show, let me jump up here. I'll try to jump up. I'm working on a one minute time frame. I want to sometimes take my pro 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 profits when I do, do a divergence here, like right here. Here's an example on the SPY. And this is a good divergence right here. Even though it's, uh, all right, that's on a one minute divergence on the SPY. A lot of people might trade SPY or the ETF or trade options on the SPY. What's great about divergence is you could trade options on a divergence. You could trade futures on the divergence. You could trade stocks on the divergence. You could trade the ES. I follow the ES because with the ES, you can trade the SPY. So if I'm using a one minute time frame and half of my signal is based off of divergences, which are based off stochastics being oversold, it makes a lot of sense that I want to get out when stochastics are overbought. All right? The profit comes. And I was just saying this before, it's very hard. Every situation, every trade is different because we might, we, don't, we have to determine what type of trade we're in. Are we in a very bullish trend? Is, did I take this divergence on a, a, a trending strong market? I want to let it run further. Am I, is this a, a, a very strong downtrend? And I got a divergence, so that's only going to give me a little balance, but it's going to be a bigger balance than the typical downward slop, and all of a sudden you get a divergence, I mean, it's gonna, instead of stopping at 20, it went up to the 50 period moving average, and then rolled over, and continued to go lower. I'm not saying the divergence is gonna change the market direction at all, but it's gonna give me a bigger move in the direction of the divergence that I could profit from, because it always, just about always does. And if you know something always does it, you wanna be prepared for it, and you wanna take it. Taking off the profits is the hardest thing. It's the hardest thing. So you have, to, you have to find something that works for you. You know, some people will say, I want to put in a, a, a tick. Say you're trading the futures, and you want to get out after a tick, two points. What if you get uh, uh, six ticks? Are you going to stick around waiting for that eight ticks, but now because it's four ticks now? Oh, now you're going to wait a little bit longer to get at least that six ticks back. So no, it's two ticks. Oh, it's breaking. There goes your divergence. So you... Yeah. At 130, is that a bearish divergence? Yes, it is. It's, uh, that's exactly what it is. I just didn't mention it. Yeah, good catch. And that's exactly what we're talking about. You can look at any chart, easily see what a divergence is by me explaining it to you and teaching you what a divergence is, see it, and see the direction there and prove it. You know, like, well, you know, that's a divergence. I understand what he's talking about. Look at the reaction of the stock after that any of them, any divergence. So you have to build your technique around there. You have to build your technique. I give you the entry, I'll give you the signal, I'll tell you where to put your stop. It is the hardest thing to tell you where you're gonna take your profit because each one of those levels is based off of current market conditions, am I in a downtrend, is it a flag? I have other techniques that I'm looking at um, that I wanna really focus, you know, maybe it's a, well, 
as you get more experience in trading, sometimes you'll see other, other patterns setting up. A divergence might turn into a flag, and it might be a very small move down before the market rips up. And it might be a sell side divergence. You get a, a high, pull back a higher high. You get the divergence, it pulls back, balances, pulls back, and then takes off again. And say it didn't pull back, it pulled back maybe three or four ticks from that divergence. And you're looking for two points. You're going to end up being stopped out if you just had that stop in there because you're not adjusting it or anything. So there's tricks to that. You have to, you have to figure out how you want to take your profit. Either you could put in a trailing stop, you know, something that trails it up, and just kind of do it. I, I do that sometimes. But I also feel like the market in this, in this age, this day and age, is when you have an order out there. He's a market maker. He's a market, well, a market maker. But if you put orders out there, you don't think there's a computer out there that knows certain levels that are going down and grabbing, grabbing uh, some orders and stuff and going back up and stuff. So it's very hard to put something so standard like a stop there and see your price come down, hit it, and then move right back. I'm like, how did that happen? Why did it hit my thing exactly and move up? And lots of times my thing, I'll have a stock, a, a, six, a six tick stock, and it goes five ticks. Nine times out of ten, it'll go five ticks. And I'm like, I can't believe this. It will not hit my target. I was like, it's stand, it's out there. It's, no one's going to, it doesn't make sense. So I ended up saying, you know, screw this. I'm taking my $75. You know, <laughs> I take my $75 and I'm gone. I've now gotten to that point where I have that discipline now to understand I don't need $100. Maybe I'll take $75 here. Or, you know, I, I feel really good about taking that. person. I can't recognize everything that's going on in every stock, every futures contract, any options. Is any members in here? Craig. Hey, Craig. What's up? Leah. 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 Or Pam and myself. All right. No, that's okay. You asked some great questions. But again, it's a testament to what we do here. Having, having 500 eyes on the market. Oh, sorry, I'm making it an even number. Yeah. Yes. I like trading. All right, I like trading the S and P futures, the E mini futures, with the divergence setup. But I want to show you something here if we have time. Like I knew this was. I don't know what time I'm supposed to be off off of this thing. Probably half an hour ago. Am I supposed to be done?